Welcome back again. Okay, so if you've missed part one, part 2.1, and part three of the Bertram 31 Repower, you should definitely go back and check those out. This is in part three, showing the Kusa stringers fitted to the boat. I, again, can't quite convey how much work went into getting to this point. I'd like to calculate that in actual man hours to see myself, but regardless, uh, it was a lot of work and they fit well. Here they are fully glassed. So at this point, the lamination is, is entirely complete uh, for the stringers. There's still the rear bulkhead we'll get to and we're doing quite a bit of glass work uh, around the struts and the rudders that's still yet to to come all right so this was a pool of resin that has sat there since 1969 it's right at the keel just in front of the aft engine room bulkhead and that crack was disturbing i decided to grind it out and i did find a fracture just below it but it was only in the first layer of fiberglass that I removed and after that was gone it looked like this and it was prepared for an, a layup. We're going to go ahead and glass from stringer to stringer and then up that rear bulkhead after uh, a putty fillet is in, applied. This is the F bulkhead that has a mahogany strip that was not very well bonded by someone else. Uh, there it is, primed with vinyl ester and then this bonding putty was packed into that crevice in preparation for a full laminate over that bulkhead and then across the top of that mahogany strip. There's a bonding putty that we use for fillets before fiberglass. It's a very high density, very strong adhesive. Oh, the Colorado took a bump. Boatyard bumper cars. Um, yeah, you don't want to know what that can do to the side of a F-250. You don't want to find out. Impressive that that's all it did to the light. Anyway, back to the boat. This is 316 stainless steel and quarter inch thickness. We'll get back to that in a second. That is that layup complete. There's actually a couple layers of 1708 that run down the center. They're staggered. You can't see it because uh, there's 1208 on top of them. And then, of course, the three quarter ounce is the final layer, which smooths everything out. And when we go sanding on that or smooth in, in preparation for paint, we only sand the three quarter ounce mat and don't get into our, our biax. Here we are with the stainless steel that's getting ready to get pre-drilled. We're just drilling pilot holes. And of course we had to do a little smoothing um, to, so those angles sit very flat and tight into that corner. And there is the outboard engine bed. Uh, those holes were drilled and we drilled pilot holes through the stringer and the recesses will allow us to through bolt the isolators and here's an in the engine jig purpose for setting it in at this point was to set on top of the upward engine bed and for us to template the inboard ramp uh, it's a name we gave it because it's very shallow. Typically they're called towers and uh, this is anything but a tower when you see it. Uh, 
And that is just showing the jig directly on the center line of the port engine there. That aluminum plate that's kind of curved with the C-clamp on it is the footprint of the isolator. And there's the ramp. That's the template for the ramp. Um, each one of those vertical lines will have a web. Oh, this is a little sidetracked here. New toy I got from Amazon. So back to this, this is a cutlass bearing for the strut. And this is the template for the strut. Now I do jump around quite a bit here, but this these are in sequence as they actually photos are taken. And so, yeah, there's a lot of jumping around, but we stay busy. And that template there shows the transom angle and the old strut and the new strut location. There, there's the prop hub in the middle of all those little hash marks on the propeller center line. Quarter inch holes that you see up there drilled through the hole. Those are the corners of the cutout that I'm gonna make room for this recess. Now, it's not every day that I cut a 11 inch by 14 inch hole in the bottom of the boat, let alone two of them. But I have cut large holes in the bottom of this boat before and we recessed a large transducer in the keel. I'll have to go back and get footage of that. There you can see the original hull laminate. It's not as thick in this area as we, we hoped. It's rather thick down the keel. And once you get close to that inboard stringer, it does get a little bit more beefy, but out in the center is a little bit light for our, our taste. We'll solve that problem. We're gonna fix that. These recesses are curing in the sun. It may be an hour or so since they were waxed. Here you can see the cutout. Looking straight through the bottom of the boat, not too fear. We're gonna seal that up here in a minute. This is the recess hot glued to the bottom of the boat. The excess around the sides is really so we can get a nice bond of fresh fiberglass to the old laminate. And then we're gonna go back on the bottom and glass around the bottom without disturbing our, our nice recess that we just created. In addition to the extra space around the strut recess, we also tapered the fiberglass so that when we do our first layers, it blends really, really well. And we will also go back in and bulk up the thin spot with multiple layers of 1708. So this is my new toy. Uh, that is after one day of use. All that dust collected in the bucket as opposed to collecting in the shop vac container, drum, whatever you want to call that thing. It actually does work. Uh, there's very little dust on the filter. We were cleaning that filter once or twice a day. And you may also notice that the blue hose is a pool hose. It's about 35 feet, I think. Any loss of suction would cause that thing to clog up. And one more quick note, we tried another type and it was a knockoff that did absolutely nothing. So beware. Back to the strut recess. This is the first layers of glass. We did four layers of three quarter ounce chop strand mat. That was really just to create the shape and hopefully not have any air bubbles. There are probably other ways to go about this. However, if I had to do this again, say next week, um, I would do it the exact same way. I wouldn't change a thing.
this is back to the rear bulkhead. Uh, we removed all the gel coat. This was a molded bulkhead that came from a company in Miami. And they installed it. Well, we're back to the strut here. Pause on that. There is a crack right there where the stringer meets the hull and we ground that out. It will get rebuilt with 1708. This is a Toshiba 16,000 BTU air conditioner keeping us cool. And this is the rear bulkhead completely laminated with 1208 and 3 quarter ounce mat. This is a first strut layup like the real hefty layup stuff. Uh, we did two layers of 3408, finished that with a 1208, and then of course a 17 ounce chop strand mat over top with vinyl ester resin. And this is after four days of use. Notice all the big stuff is in the bucket and only fine powder made it into the shop vac. These are the strut molds that we used jack stands to hold in place and actually press up against the hull. They've been removed and the molds are coming down. I had to sand a little bit to get that thing to pop out of there, but not much. So that shows the strut recess with the molds removed and here's the third layup we did. We used 3408 again but we also went with 3610 over top of that. Then a 1208 all the way to the transom and finished with 3 quarter ounce chop share mat. Again we're using vinyl ester resin. And this is now prepared for the exterior layup, which will be done in epoxy resin. And that's about it for this video. There's a whole lot more to come. Check back often. Stay tuned. And if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, maybe share with a friend, and I'll keep doing it. Thank you.